Live. It is live now. Hey guys, <laughs> sorry we are like five minutes late, which is Zeb's Achilles heel. So he's gonna smile, even though we're late because it actually wasn't my fault. So woo woo! Just a lot of repairs on this rocking uh, rocking chair, more than we thought. The arms were falling off. I had to completely re-drill this hole here because there was a screw broken off inside. Uh, there was a rung missing back here, so we had to make it match. And now I got to fill those holes, which we will do on camera. All and right. then, what are you doing? I'm trying to pull this out so I can see it. Oh. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to show you this guys. this arm was completely off. This is what I'm going to show you guys for. Zeb's talking fast, which means he knows we're late. Cause, so it's kind of broken. I don't know if you guys can see that in there. But anyways, this is Zeb was fixing this on the front porch. Um, we go live every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time. We take junk and we fix it for things that we're going to sell at our shop in Lehigh and online at jamierayvintage.com. So if you like these kinds of videos, be sure to give it a thumbs up and share it out. Um, this piece actually came from the church that we're renovating to move our retail store in. If you're new, you might not know about that. We bought a 130-year-old church. And uh, yeah, we're going to be we're going to be fixing it up. I'm going to fix some of Zeb's smudgeons over here also, and this was left by the previous tenants yep. they were going to throw it away because it was in pieces and i couldn't stand to see it go it is not antique it's probably like 1980s pressed oak it's made to look old the coloring is very indicative of the 80s so we're going to paint it and give it a new look zeb's going to show you a real quick way to fill holes okay so this is just the uh, iod air dry clay iron orchid designs and it's paper clay it does harden up pretty well, almost like a plaster once it's all cured up. I'm just going to drop some wood glue down there in the bottom because it will stick really, really well to the paper clay and drop the little piece in here and then just go until it's flush because there was a rung back here, but that one over on the other side was completely missing. So I pulled the rung out of this side, made sure that it was still sturdy, which it is, and we're, we're good to go. Can everybody hear us okay? I think Zeb's got his microphone in the appropriate place, and I've got mine right here, but I want to double check because was it last week I was like muted? Yeah, for a you hot were minute? muted. <laughs> There's inevitably one mic or both mics or something will go on. Zeb means air dry clay. What did you call it? Did I say paper clay? Mm -hmm. It's air dry clay. It is like a, it's a paper clay. All right. It used to be like the IOD sisters used to only call it paper clay. Yeah, and then they came out with this. <laughs> yeah. This is more like if you guys ever used Play Doh, like it's really soft and pliable, like fresh Play Doh, not the old crusty stuff your kids left out. This is like very soft Play Doh, but when it dries, it's not like crusty, like dried out Play Doh. It dries hard and you can paint it. We use it for repairs because it's handy. It doesn't really shrink. Occasionally it cracks a little bit, but that's always good for what we're, we're going for. We work with that. Volume is good, Cindy says. All right. Um, Pam says she can hear us really good today. And Cindy, congratulations on six months. I saw your post on Instagram. That was super exciting. Um, Dee says, how do you store air dry clay after use? In a Ziploc bag. So air dry clay is not the time to use the bargain basement store brand bag. You want a nice Ziploc bag. In fact, double bag is even better. If you don't use it fast enough after it's open and you start to notice that it's drying out, you can put a baby wipe or a damp paper towel in there to regain some moisture in your clay. After it's open, I mean, you can't expect it to last a year, but I would say it would last a good couple of months. So keep that in mind. I also push as much air out of the bag as I can and then put it in. All right. I think we're ready to paint. Yeah, I think we I are ready think, to paint. Um, I mean, it's a little dusty. But... Lena says that I look good with my hair up. This is good because as we're working on the church, the hair down his situation is not working because I'm actually a full-time construction worker now and <laughs> hair down does not work for construction. So it's uh, going to be hair up t-shirt leggings. And that's my uniform. Well, I was talking to Bishop last night about ripping the cabinets out of there. And he's like, who's helping you do this? I'm like, Jamie. He's like, Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm the assistant. Zeb does things that are heavy. I take doors off and I follow behind and sweep up and get all the little bits. And yeah. then I help with two hands if necessary. So, We're going to get started painting, though. Um, what did you want to say? There's just not there's not any crismudgeons on here, really. It's pretty clean. Everybody's going to freak out that it's like, get the Lysol out and soak it down. For us, if there's any dust or anything, it's going to just go into the paint. We add salt wash to our paint regularly, so a little bit of dust is just 
added goodness for the texture. It's not a big deal. And it just add make, that to the ingredient list. Yeah. Like there's an ingredient list on here. Just add a small amount of dust. It has some great texture. So today's finish, you guys kind of get mad when I do this because you don't know exact measurements. I don't know either, but I feel like that's part of the lesson today. Waste, not Wednesday. Use what you have to get your projects done. So we've been using a lot of Bluebird and um, Sea Green, which is also Ocean by Sweet Pickens. And I had a little bit of Love Bug left over, so I dumped out all of my Bluebird. I dumped out all of my Sea Green and probably a quarter of a sample of Love Bug. So it was like 50-50 Bluebird to Sea Green, um, and then a dash of Love Bug, and then a dash of Extra Bond because I had some farmhouse finishes, which doesn't chip. Um, but the milk paint does, and this is kind of shiny, so I went ahead and added some Extra Bond to it. And then I mixed it up with my immersion blender. I did this off camera because it's loud and I wanted it to have it to have time to set up. If you let your milk paint set up, just a scotch that was there like a chunk that didn't get mixed. Um, I don't know what that was. We're <laughs> going with it. Um, if you let your milk paint sit like 10 minutes, it will get thicker. So if you want to buy milk paint, you can go to jamierayvintage.com. It is free shipping on the milk paint and on the Klingon brushes that we're using. We're going to be two-toning this, which means we'll be bringing out DIY paint. And that is not free shipping, but we sell that on the website as well. And that's going to come here in a little bit. All right. So I was told since we're doing it up here, I have to paint all the stuff high. And I'm fine with that because <laughs> she was wanting to do it on the ground. I'm like, that's, that's going to be like squatting the whole time. I don't well, wanna... you're going to get to do the two-tone too. It's fine. I can do it. So what, do the everybody want to hear about California. So we left last Friday and drove 10 hours to California. We left super early. So we got there. And enough time it is to exactly help. Exactly 700 miles from our house to Debbie's shop, DIY a go go in Encinitas. Yeah, it's, it's on a, the Pacific Coast Highway. You, we either have to leave <laughs> early or leave late because you don't want to hit rush hour. So on, when we left, we left late. And when we, like, we left to go home, but when we left to go there, we left early. So that way we could have a few work hours before the day was over, over and try to like assess what we were going to do. Um, Debbie is an extremely hard worker. And she has great employees, but sometimes you get to the point with decision making where you just need somebody to come in and say, okay, I'm just going to work and I'm not going to ask questions. And so that's kind of what we did. I just I, was I like, what do, you need, what do you need done? <laughs> and we went to work. I'm not sure she loved everything, but she was grateful for it. And we got a lot of things finished. So she's going to have her grand reopening of her vintage back antique room, Kobe's Finds starts Thursday. And I was so excited because this morning she said, I might even have time to get my car washed and get a pedicure. And I was like, you know what? That's super important to be able to have that downtime before a big event. So definitely success there. We will have a video up with um, sneak peeks of what we did as well as what the room looks like. I had Debbie film it for us. She sent that footage today. So watch for that edited video coming out Friday. We're also going to take you guys along with us to Kobe's swap meet um, and you can go junking with us and with Debbie. So yeah, we're excited. So also update on the church. I don't know if we talked about this much, but we are getting started on demo. We were hoping for something in writing by the end of January. And then, cause that's what our contract stipulated. So, so we should probably elaborate yeah. for new people in writing, meaning we were working with a production oh, yes. studio, sorry. <laughs> um, and they wanted to pitch us to TV networks, which they did, but they didn't have anything in writing. And finally I just said, we can't afford to wait anymore. We've now carried this for three months. We're making our fourth mortgage payment and we're running out of money. Like we, that's the reality. You can have all the money in the world, but you gotta, you can't just have something sitting there not doing anything. So we've got to get started because I don't want to spend money on mortgage payments when I could be spending money on the repairs and that church is going to need some love. Yep. So anyway, sorry, go ahead. I just wanted to explain. So I, was just, what I was just saying, we didn't, we didn't get any, anyone that's bit yet. And the production company said, yeah, go ahead. Don't worry about it. Film what you're doing so that if we do get a show that goes and you guys aren't too far along with it, we can just jump in and we have some footage. So, you know, of course, we're going to film it anyway. So we have started demo at the church. The roll off is coming today. And we've got a, one of the there's two. There were two kitchens in the church because it was split kind of into two apartments. And one of the kitchens is almost all the way out. Yeah, we took down a half wall. It took us a while. We took an entire load already to the dump because we hadn't quite done final clean out from when they moved. And so we had to 
take that yesterday and then we're separating out the things that we'll be selling or reclaiming um, while we are also making the decisions of what to keep and what to get rid of. So you're going to see on this Saturday's thrift haul, there will be some um, church finds that we're selling. So we're super excited about that. We're hoping to get all of the demo done in the chapel portion before we leave for England. Oh, you know, next Thursday. Yeah, that's already next Thursday, guys. It's but demo doesn't coming. take that long. Like if Zeb and I really get to it, we could oh. have that thing cleared out in probably three or four days. So. Yeah, it's not like I have this afternoon, all day tomorrow. Friday's video is already filmed. I just need to edit it. So that'll be a couple hours on Friday that it takes away. And then we mostly, because we did a lot of uh, junking, no thrift stores, but we went to the Kobe swap meet with Debbie. Um, we should be pretty well. We have enough stuff for the thrift haul, yeah. I think. Yeah, because we also hit up some stuff before we left. And again, things from the church. I think we'll have a full thrift haul, so that's done. And while I'm going to start painting over at the church, so the there's two kitchens. There's a kitchen we're tearing out right now, which is in the chapel portion. And then there's the kitchen that we'll, we will eventually tear out um, for our shipping room. So in the meantime, I'm just going to use that kitchen to paint it because I was like, you know what? I don't care if I get paint on the floor or on the island. And then I don't have to constantly be cleaning up after myself here. I can just put everything out there and then paint. And while paint is drying, I can be Zeb's uh, trusty assistant because he doesn't always need me. But sometimes you just got to have a separate set of hands. Yeah, sometimes something. And I long. clean up after him. So you might <laughs> see all the video of him doing demo, but just know, even though nobody's filming me. We got a good <laughs> kick out of Jamie yesterday. She put her foot right through a wall. I did put my foot through a wall. Uh, I, I'm behind Zeb picking things up and sweeping. So super excited about that. Um. So, but the reason we want to get it done before we go is just so we can get that behind us. And so we can have a better idea of the floor space while we're in England in case we find really cool stuff or if we see displays that we like so that we can, you know, do do our best to recreate them or make something similar and we know what will fit where. Yeah, so we're, we're, we're excited. Um, we'll probably want the biggest projects are going to be the demo and then HVAC, which we will hire out the HVAC. So... That, at least we aren't physically doing that. We oh, just got to make sure that they have time. Uh-oh. Oh, no. So it probably looks like we're uh, all over the place painting this thing and blurry too. Yeah, Zeb, would you paint the top though? Because that's where we got a two-tone. Yep. Um, it's it's because I'm chasing Jamie around as she moves with the paint. Yeah, you just, <laughs> you just paint the top and I will get this stuff down low. Debbie does still have two stores, but the other one isn't open. It's like a storage yard. It's really cool though. She wants to use that as a filming area. That's like her original store and maybe use it for classes or boot camps or whatever. So yeah, she's got that going on. So you'll notice as we're painting these rungs, we're going side to side. That is our favorite way to paint chairs, table legs, anything round really. Go side to side. And then if it's got like crazy brush strokes, you can come down and like smooth everything out. But we find it's really easy to just, you know, almost like slapping it on. Just careful not to get okay, paint, paint all over everywhere. Here. I am painting. I got to reload my brush. <laughs> well, let me put it in the middle. How about that? I'll share with you. I'm not very good at sharing. Delissa says she's just tired um, listening to us. You know what? It's, it's so fun. You get we... used to it, though. And you know what? I was talking to Jamie after tearing that kitchen out yesterday. I'm like, we didn't even do a whole lot. And I'm not con in construction shape. I'm not <laughs> like we've been going and working out and, and going around the track and things like that. But there's a difference between that and like working hard for 12, 15 hours a day. We didn't work so that hard, you can but... get like a whole project done in a hurry. <clears throat> if you guys haven't watched it yesterday, we put up a video that we filmed last week, actually, um, of us making over those tins that I got from Sarah that originally I think were like dollar store tins. So if you haven't checked that out, be sure to check out that video. And if you wanted to buy one, um, we've sold two tins thus far, and we've got nine tins to sell. They're all fun and unique. And somebody even commented they like the up-close shots that we did. I was like, well, they're up-close because we didn't use a tripod. Yeah. That video the video was entirely filmed with our phones. Yep, no tripod Because or we didn't have time. <laughs> the only thing that's on a tripod is the... The intro <coughs> and outro. Excuse me, is the, the sign out. Um, um, where are you going to England, and what... Or you want to visit take care and stay safe so we're going to be in the english countryside mostly going to flea markets and boot sales 
staying on the Kent side, so over um, on the side closest to France, for those of you that don't know, don't know where Kent is, it's kind of along the English Channel, that yep. a good explanation of it. Um, and we're staying in a great cottage that uh, was referred to us by another junker picker. And we're just gonna go junking and picking. And we thought about doing a container, but we might just wind up shipping our finds home. So we're gonna have to get really good deals because boxes cost about $150 a box to ship home. They're not so, big boxes either. But it's worth it to me to be able to bring those treasures to the people of Lehigh and back to the US because there's just things that we cannot get here. And we're hoping that if it's advantageous and we do well at shopping that we can make a few trips a year um, and then we're going to take you guys along with us. So we will be filming, possibly going live while we're there. Yeah, because I know, on internet. I know it's not possible for everybody to get over there. And so we really want to share this experience with you guys. Because, you know, if it wasn't for our channel and everybody that shops a website, um, shameless plug, jamierayvintage.com, <laughs> we would not be able to travel. Like, that's why we can do what we do. So we want to share with you guys. I think it's going to be fun. And it's our 20th wedding anniversary trip. That's really that that's there is really the push on going. We probably in the middle of this church project would not have booked a church uh, trip in March. But honestly, but. once we started this house, we stopped taking big trips like France was the last one. And I'm like, you know what? We're never going to not be busy. So we got to take the trips. Got to take the trips. All right, Zeb, can you see what comments are over there cuz I Yeah, I'll look I've at gone to I can't read them. It's okay. We got so many rungs. It, and I, know. I don't know. This is covering pretty well. As long as it doesn't chip, I think we might be okay with mostly one coat. We might have to do like a coat and a half touch up. But yeah, it, we're definitely going to need touch up. But the hold on. Puppies barking. They actually can't hear them as well because we're mic'd up, Zeb. Rex literally just jumped over the couch. He jumped. Oh, he's such a stinker. That couch is not going to survive. You guys remember how to white couch? This is why I did not want dogs. They are just good that they're cute. <laughs> Lena says to try the charity stores. They have quite a few really great I heard finds. charity stores were expensive, but I think Maybe sometimes it depends London, on what you're looking though. for. Yeah, we're not going to do much in London. We might do a day on the on-off bus, but I'm not one for big crowds and busy streets and things like that. I like a slower pace. And so we'll fly in and out of London. We will stock up at the London Costco because <laughs> you got to have some Don't worry. Food. We're going to be eating at uh, plenty, of, plenty of fish and chips. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> but when you're junking and stuff, sometimes you're not always ready to eat when the restaurants are open because their schedules are a little different in Europe. So I just want to make sure I have food because I was real hungry in France a lot. It was a good thing that I brought instant oatmeal because I ate that <laughs> many mornings, me and my instant oatmeal. So we're going to get to two-toning this eventually, which I think is going to be the exciting part. Um, we'll have to put this kind of on its back so Zeb can do it. There's some great detail here on the bottom and there um, along the top. And two-tone really is a great way to add cottage style to whatever you're painting. Debbie had this table that you'll probably see a picture of. It's like a pie crust table. It was pink and she wanted it to be dirty pink, but she didn't like it. And literally all I did was paint the edge white over the black, black wax, which wound up being a resist and made it chippy. Um, and it just transformed the entire table. So it made it go to little cottagey two-tone situation. It was so cute. All right. Any questions? Um, I'm, I'm going to look at questions here now. I'll give it a second. And they are so easy to clean and they just really lay the paint on well. What? Oh. <laughs> time out. That's got to fix it. Yeah, I fixed it. It's fine. It's already looking so cute. My mom said, hi, kids. Just want you to know I'm here. Glad you're watching, mom. I know you can't always hey, with your internet out there. My mom's in Alabama right now. They're... They're getting their. They're in their winter home. Their their bus slash motor home slash my dad's fifth wheel to haul his forty foot trailer full of lumber that he milled himself back to New Mexico. They're getting all of that ready because they mill in Alabama, 
but they're building a home and a big shop in New Mexico <laughs> with Lumber My Dad Milk. All right, I'm having a stretch, so I need you to paint up there. Okay, I'll get it. I'm having a struggle. I painted the front of those rungs, so. So Jed and Kate said, will we get to see videos of the church demo? You know we're filming it. Yeah, we are filming it. It's not going to be like an all the time thing because Demo's it's not, not that exciting. Like, like, like after you get past the demo and the rebuild part, like a lot of people, some people really do want to see all of that. But most people don't tune in for all the nitty gritty in between videos. So we're probably going to do like one demo video Every a little weeks. before and after. And then, you know, honestly, we're, we're not going to go crazy with it. We're going to get some fun lighting in there, patch up any holes in the mortar that that are the outside has need been, help. But the outside needs a lot of work, but that's something we can do over yeah. time. It's not the outside of the church isn't falling apart today, right? No. Like it just needs mortar repair. And that's just going to be me up on the ladder. And I'm not going to put off opening the church for that because it's just going to have to happen over time. Yep. So so honestly, once we get the demo done, get it all cleaned up, there's some painting that needs to happen, some new light fixtures that need to go in. And then we're going to start moving stuff over. Like it might be open like mid to end of April if we can hustle. <clears throat> I said it here. Um, the kids want to go. The kids want to go to California for spring break. So let's say all by right. May. End of April is basically May, right? <laughs> <laughs> the kids really want to take surfing lessons from uh, Ellie's husband, Zach. I don't know. I can't remember his name. Ellie is Debbie's niece, and her son is a sponsored surfer, and the kids have been bugging us about her surfing husband? lessons. Her, her husband, what did I say? You said her, her son. Her, her husband. Sorry. <laughs> my brain is all over the place. And it it's actually a work trip when we go because my kids love to thrift and junk, so then we can take the trailer and get stuff from Kobe's. Okay. Oh yeah. Anyway. So I'm hoping if we can get the demo done, like we want to, before we go, that we'll be able to come back, build some displays. That's actually going to take the longest is building displays. Are all the videos on YouTube? Um, yes. Every video we do is on YouTube. We're starting to put them on Facebook as well. So you can go back and watch playlist. If you missed us renovating, I don't know if we have so many new people, especially through Facebook. We actually, bought a hundred year old home, which is now like 105 years old. Um, yeah, 1917, yeah. yeah. 105 year old home. And we completely gutted it. Gut, like when I say gutted, I mean not all new everything. Um, and then we add a 2,600 square foot addition with zero previous uh, construction experience. And it was just him and me. <laughs> so we have like videos of we did all get that. the foundation and yeah. the HVAC done by somebody else, but that's it. We hired out three things: the foundation, HVAC, and we had two giant bathrooms that we had tiled. That I was like, if we did that, we wouldn't have been able to close on time. So we went ahead and had those tiled. But like everything in this kitchen, we did that. These cabinets, I actually <laughs> painted and put the trim on myself because that was busy. So if you are interested in watching that kind of craziness. Those are all up It's on all in YouTube. a playlist in chronological order on our YouTube. Uh, it says, okay, Heather's in Kent. She says, Papa's fish and chips and didn't are a must. Done. Okay. We, that's one of our favorite things when we're traveling, whether we're working or just on vacation, we will find the locals' favorite places to eat because they know what's up. So we had a good question here. Hold on. Hold on. Oops. Anna, just bought chairs almost identical to this rocker. Don't care for the color. Can you sand lightly and old and gray and seal again? I don't want it to rub off on people. So if you don't want it to rub off and you really want to change the color, you have to take off the finish. So you have to sand them enough that you're giving that old and gray something to stick to. Or you can just use gray paint and seal it and it would be fine. Um, if you And anything you seal, like if you were to just use old and gray and put sealer on it, it's not going to come off on people's clothes. However, you're going to have patches where it's old and gray, and then you're going to have patches where it's whatever the color was before, because the sealer is going to, it is going to look kind of streaky because wherever there's still sealer, that old and gray is just going to kind of sit on top of it, if that makes sense. So I have in past when things had a, um, like a really dry finish, 
I've sanded them and old and grayed them and they've been fine because most of the finish was off. But on a, something like this, it would be a little bit difficult to get down in all the rungs. So just keep that in mind. It's not going to come off on people's clothes, but it might not have an even finish. So hopefully that answers your question. Lisa, no shade, Jamie. When you have to start a sentence with no shade, I feel like there's a slight amount of like coverage from the sun there. Um, it says, I know you don't need to say, but I know she's always saying me and I, you guys are a team. Zeb and yourself. <laughs> um, so here's the things with that. First of all, I was raised like an only child. So <laughs> did I just think something? And again? second of all, our marriage, we are one. So when I say I, it means us. <laughs> just like, you know, like they say that I was taken from Zeb's side or, or Eve was taken from Adam's side and they are literally the same person. So just pretend like that's what I mean, which is true. <laughs> Catch you next time. Oh, Leslie's leaving. Bye, Leslie. Did we stand the rocker first? No, nope. we did not stand the rocker. I did. And I really was the one, not Zeb. I did add extra bond to the um, paint to make it stick. And so that should work really well, hopefully. <laughs> Lisa gave me a smiley face. <laughs> hopefully that, Delissa said that was a good answer. It really is true. Zeb and I work so well together that it's, it's one of those things that it's nothing is just mine, nothing is just his. And we're able to work on projects together because we spend so much time together. Yep. And there's uh... things he's good at and things I'm good at. We were talking the other day, uh, there was this video was it a uh, little real? And this guy like does all these things to wake his wife up. But in our house, <laughs> I'm the morning person. So I'm usually the one that's like making breakfast, helping motivated Zeb to get up. And then he's a night owl. So he's the one that like at the end of the day tickles my arm. So I fall asleep and brings me snacks. So we kind of have like the reverse roles. We definitely have a few spots we're missing here. Zeb, so yep. I think you can probably start two-toning the top of that, though. We can you this open this? back here that's completely I'll keep missed. doing that if you can There's open the There's just a few spots one. that need, like, another pass over. But it's, we've been going at it so long that it's almost dry. Yeah. I'm going to get you a little artist brush. Would you mind opening the white swan? We'll yeah. get to two-toning this. Where's my fancy? Uh, I have found some antique pliers that I had in the garage. I think someone sent them to us, but I can't remember who. It's been so long now. I don't know oil-based paint, Marsha. I wish I could help you, but I don't use oil-based paints. They're not super great for the environment. And so I've not tried to mimic that hard shell look. We did use lacquer back in the day. And it's been a really long it was, time. Uh, it was one of like the worst things I ever did as far as like spraying lacquer. Yeah. If you wanted to, you could get a uh, catalyzed lacquer from Sherwin-Williams. And that is a really hard I don't finish. even know if they'll sell it to you anymore. Like they, it was on its way out. Yeah. I don't know. So you can also use, if you just want like a glossy finish, like the high gloss, just use a high gloss sealer. So you can paint however you want, let it dry, use a high gloss sealer. Or you can also take pieces and have them done at like an auto body shop. Yeah. I've seen people do that. They want a high gloss finish and they take a piece, they have it sandblasted and then they have it sprayed at auto body shop. It's spendy, but you can get that really high, high gloss finish. Ever thought of using a spray gun for items? Yes, oh, we, Diana, we used it all the time. We, we have like 20 or 30 videos in a, in a, playlist on just how to spray these types of paints, milk paint and chalk paint. But it doesn't really make for a good live video. We did spray live once in it, our driveway. Yeah. It went okay. Yeah, it was all right. <laughs> Wasn't our best option. Okay. That needs, I don't want to heat gun it because the milk paint. No, that top is pretty dry. I'm going to get you a little brush. Almost always. And if you want like a really chippy finish, throw a heat gun on your milk paint um, and uh, use that to dry it out because it will... Almost always. I um, I can't remember a time that it hasn't chipped quite a bit. From All right. That. I got a couple artist brushes so we can I'm gonna start. I'm going to bring this down on the side and come in the front. Oh, that'll help you paint some of these missed spots too. Oh, look at that. Well, I can start. <clears throat> yeah, you can start doing that. And yep. here's the brushes. And then. I'm going to bring you guys in close for this. Oh, yeah. There's lots of spots I missed. Zeb's going to two-tone it. 
Did y'all buy a church? If so, what church? So we bought a church not to have a church, but we bought a church that was being used as a residence that we are renovating and turning into our shop. Originally, it was the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and it was built in what, 18... 1894. 94. And it stopped being a church in the 50s. The existing, the people before us that owned it bought it in the 60s, converted it into a residence. And we are now taking out their residential conversions and opening up the space to look similar to what it did when it was a church. But there will be no pews as we will be selling our, our wares and junk in this old church. Yeah, so we call it the church, but it's going to be our retail shop. It, yeah. And it hasn't been a church for a long, long time. Yeah. And it's not because of its setup. It's really not conducive to modern day congregations. Um, it's pretty small by our like church standards of where to fit people. In fact, it never actually had pews, interestingly enough. There's not holes in the floor. They Can just had like favorite? chairs that they set up. Can you put a hand on that end? You're rocking this like crazy. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Imagine that, rocking a rocking chair. Rocking a rocking chair. So this brush is going to be a little bit maddening because it's got some frayed bristles and they're getting where I don't want them to be. Yeah, this church belonged to this church. This chair belonged to the Lambs. And they owned the church before they us. They owned the church before they us. They lived there for 60 and they, years. <laughs> they left us a few treasures, and we are going to be taking those and making them over and then getting rid of the things that we that we don't need. So this is DIY White Swan. We like to come back with the, the DIY for the two-tone because it just it sticks so well. It's so easy to it's work thicker. with. It's thicker. Yeah, it's thick, so it's really... It goes on really good coverage, and you don't have to do a bunch of coats. We're going to be 60 degrees next week, guys. 60 degrees. Rex found some bubble wrap. Oh, that belongs to those corbels. I'm going to let him pop them. It's not good <laughs> for him to eat that. Sorry, Bubby. I know that's so fun. No, don't sit your butt on the bubble wrap. Rex, move. Thank you. All right. So you can see I'm, I'm, I'm going on here, but I'm not, I'm not like so worried about getting out of the lines because what we'll do is we'll wet distress this anyway and that that is one of the reasons why we wet distress everything it's not because we can't do a really neat paint job i could spend several hours just making sure i was doing really nice neat exact work but it helps us be more efficient we're going to distress the whole piece anyway um <clears throat> so no reason to sweat getting in all the lines and just making sure it's like a super neat paint job because at the end of the day, it's, we want it to look a little more aged. So we're going to bring this back anyway. Yeah. It's very full guardy. Do you need me to help you two tone? Oh, no, I got, I think I got this brush figured out. Well, I used to freak out about it, and Sasha, who makes the milk paint, used to paint all the time, and she would do two-tone. I'm like, do you tape it all off? How do you do that? She's like, you just paint it. And I was like, what do you mean you just paint it? And then I started doing it, and I'm like, oh, I get what you're saying. It's fine. You just do it. If I can do it, anybody can do it, because I'm not a neat person. I don't know if you know that about me. Sorry. Is this bugging you to do this? Nope. You're holding it? Yep. Okay. I can't believe it's just back there. You had a lot of leverage because you're oh, on yeah. the other end of the chair. <laughs> so I can't believe like... that we've got like so much painted. Sorry, we had a drip that like chairs, rocking chairs like this are pain in the bum. I would never do a chair like this white unless I was going to spray it because holy moly. This blue covers good. So we used Sea Green by Farmhouse Finishes, Love Bug by Sweet Pickens, and um, Bluebird by Sweet Pickens. And I mixed mix. those all together to get this color. We just tried to use whatever was left over because that's the theme of Waste Not Wednesday. And we sell those at jamierayvintage.com. Let's see. So if you're worried, Marsha, about pieces scratching, there's a couple things that you can do. Um, one is not all chalk paint is created equal, so you make sure you're using stuff that dries rock hard. Um, we use DIY and Sweet Pickens. And then the other is you make sure you clean your pieces well. 
which this piece, obviously there was dust on it, so I'm not the prime example, but we'll wax it and it'll be just fine. And then also let them cure. So if you give them a full 30 days, it's gonna be better. If something is so shiny, you can see your reflection, you probably should like lightly sand it or use a primer. In this case, we used Extra Bond, which is kind of like a built-in primer that works with milk paint. But if you're just using DIY paint, you could use, they make Salvation Solution is a really great primer and it just makes that paint stick so, so well. And then again, let people know, you know, this isn't made to go outdoors and it's, you know, an artisan type finish. So you wouldn't take artwork and beat the heck out of it, I guess. And we also go for that chippy worn look. So when it does age over time, it kind of wears with the piece. That's our style. That's one of the things I think that separates a lot of what people are looking for here in the US versus like Europe. And maybe I'm wrong, but when we were in France, nothing was too precious there. And all together, when you see that look together, it's just a really comfy, homey feel. And that's what we're going for. So that's what we do here. But you definitely, there are things you can do to make your pieces more like user friendly for people. And there's always going to be the lady that lets their kid eat peaches and heavy syrup and leaves the bowl on the table for a week and then peels it off and the paint comes with it and then they don't know what happened. Like, Ask me know. how I know. I don't know. I'm like, heavy syrup, that's like glue. You let glue sit on your table for an entire week and then you peeled it off. <laughs> like, of course the finish came off. There ain't no finish in the world that's going to fix that. Um, is dead... Kai wants to know if Deb's doing okay with her resale room. Yes, she. I think she's pretty much ready to there. go. They're pricing like she's good. stuff. And yeah, she's in such a good place. I'm so glad that we went. <coughs> Bobby says, I wish I had that steady of a hand to do that kind of painting. I do the same. Like Zeb's hand is definitely steadier than mine, um, but I can do it without. And then what I do sometimes I'll come back and touch it up, but my hand is not steady. So. Real quick tip, if you're not steady, um, and I learned this way back in art school, I'm, I'm able to just hold my hand, but put your hand down on like your flat surface and like on the back or, or like a finger, and then use that as your pivot point and, and work from there. Don't, don't try to hold your whole arm up. I'm able to do it because I lift weights, right? But, <laughs> and this, this isn't heavy comparatively, but you know, like get, get that point, oops, move the camera. And then you, you can just like arc. I do the same thing when I'm drawing circles. Marsha, you are so welcome. I'm glad that that helped answer your question. It It is, you know, when you're reselling, you wanna put your best foot forward. And I, I totally get that. I also, a lot of times if I'm shipping a piece, especially I'll send them the video. Like this is everything I did to this piece. So that way they know hundred percent what they're getting. You would never want somebody to be um, surprised. So I lost a crack right there that I wasn't gonna paint, but We'll, we'll get it back when we discuss. Can, can all the different paints be mixed? Karen, yes. If they're water-based, um, I have mixed DIY and Sweet Pickens Milk Paint together just to get like get rid of a bunch of paint. Like I don't like to waste any of it, so I don't mind mixing it. What happens half. is the DIY makes the milk paint stick really well, and so you will probably get some chipping, but it helps it adhere. Yeah, if you have a, like a 50-50 mix of DIY milk paint, your, paint's, your piece isn't going to chip. Well, at least not much. <laughs> I can, I can, milk paint's a wild card, you know? We've been using it for X amount of years. I don't even know how long. And every now and then we're like, huh, that chipped way more than I wanted it to. <laughs> yeah, that happened last week. And I came back with farmhouse finishes over after the live video for those nightstands. Hey, All right. Knock it off with the WWE over there. I'm going to come help. Can you there. scoot over just to hey, scoot? you're going to have to calm that down. Okay. <laughs> hey, boys, knock it off. No, no. You can't see them, the dogs are back behind, but they're, they were going full wrestle. This one, this one's instigating. Can you say hi? No, knock it off. Be He's nice. a little guy, he starts all the fights and then he runs to Jamie when it gets real tough because Rex is quite a bit bigger than he Rex is now. Rex was mean to me. We're gonna have to paint something else this color because I mixed up a whole lot. Yeah, you did. Let's see if I can get in here. I'm, I'm going to try to finish this corner and maybe do the middle. How are we doing on time? We got about 13 minutes left here and then maybe get a wet distress on it. I think it'll be dry enough that we can on this, this half. Oh. 
I'll just get this bottom hang it so we can show them. Oh, are you doing that portion? Yeah. This this brush is driving me crazy. It's got like three hair, three bristles that are like poking out and they it's drag. It's a pretty crappy brush. Yeah, I think we got Need it from go. got it from IKEA. He might need to just go outside. I will. I'm gonna give him a minute. Cause he's got he's got the zoomies. Yeah, he just jumped over the couch. That's yeah, he it. hit the couch cushion at a full run and just vaulted over the top of it over the back. It's like the puppy Olympics over here. He's getting very big. He's about 35 pounds now. And the way he's almost six months old. So, you know, that for a 35 pound dog at six months, that puts him about half, half his, his adult weight. So he's going to be big. <laughs> we big. thought he was going to be little, but he's going to be big. Turns out surprise pot twist. I would wager at least 65 to 70. And he's not afraid to eat his Wheaties. In fact, he eats just about anything that he can put in his mouth. California really likes to cater to puppies. We went to the Union, <laughs> which is right across the street from uh, Debbie's store, and they had a pup menu. And so the kids, the kids, the puppies got chicken and rice. <laughs> yeah, they brought out like this. It looked better than what I was having. I had a burger. I'm like, dang, let me have some of that chicken and rice. And Rex ate all of his chicken and rice and everything that Cody didn't finish. And, and most of Cody's. <laughs> And then after that, they're like, dog food? What's dog food? Cody's, like Cody's only like 10 pounds still, so he's, he, I think he's about guy. done. He really, he's only gained two pounds since we've had him. I thought he was nine pounds when we got him. No, he's eight. I was eight pounds, yeah. that's right. I hear I heard chewing, but he's actually got his toy this time. Whew. The training is sinking in slowly. Okay. It's, slow, it's a slow burn on the training. Slow burn. We've had ever... a lot of people ask why we do not let them sleep with us because we didn't even let our kids sleep with us because the secret to our 20 year happy marriage is we sleep just Jamie and Zeb. No puppies in there. This, is that the secret? I don't know. There's a lot of secrets, but that might be one of them. I don't know that there's any secrets really. All right. I'm done. All right. Hello. You have a pencil. Cody, that's not okay, you little stinker. I, think I just bought a 40 pack. Jamie will get back here in a sec and get to get to some of your questions if you have any questions. All right. At least I did enough down there that we can sand that once it dries. Yeah. I think I think this side will be able to be sanded. And I don't know. Are you gonna wet this? That looks like sand? Wedgwood. It does look like Wedgwood. Um, I'm gonna distress the I'm bottom. Gonna bring it closer here so you can see. So Jamie, this is what I'm talking about. Jamie really did not sweat the details, right? She just took her bigger brush and brushed it on there. I'm going a little more detailed on mine. Well, yours is a little more detailed and I will sand it. And what I do is I sand it and then I come back with the other color and then touch it up. But now that I'm close up, you can see it's not like the world's best super neatest paint job. It's, it's just not. And if you, if you, you, you could totally spend like four or five hours painting this, but how long have we been doing this portion? About 15 minutes. Marsha, there should be some retailers in Texas. If there aren't, we do ship there. I know that it's a little bit spendy to pay for shipping, but we can ship to you in Texas. Definitely. What's and if you guys after? ever need a rush order um, for a project, just email customer care at jamierayvintage.com. We can't always accommodate, but I know what it's like to be under the gun or in the middle of a project, and we will always do our best to get to you because we are not the ones shipping. In case somebody's like, they need to stop working on that, whatever it is, and start shipping. I'm like, oh no, we have people shipping around the clock because there's no way we could do it without our awesome um, staff and employees. Okay, I'm just seeing if there's any other questions. Oh, Carrie said, I received my pig bookends. They look great on my counter with a few of my vintage cookbooks. Carrie, I would love to see a picture. If you're on Facebook at all, um, in the Jamie Ray Vintage group, I'd love to see a picture. Those were so cute. So could you get a similar look if you used white wax? Um, not really, but if you guys have not watched our latest furniture video that we did last Friday, um, we did a dresser and it was white underneath salt wash. And then I painted it a similar color to this, a little bit darker over the top. And instead of two-toning it, I literally just took a damp rag, wiped off the top coat and the white paint from underneath came through and it looks like I two-toned it. So that's kind of like a, the cheater's way. <laughs> but that really wouldn't work with something like this because this is a lot more detailed than that. But that might help you out a little bit too. Thank you, Caitlin. Caitlin put um, 
store questions. We have a store phone number. That's only for local people. They do not handle website stuff. She also put her cell phone number. You can text Caitlin directly for questions and also the in, email info at jamierayvintage.com. Make sure you spell Jamie, J-A-M-I, no E at the end because that happens a lot. Um, and Caitlin is happy to help you. Where are we located, Kimberly? We are in Lehigh, Utah. Our shop is 1245 West Main Street. And then you can also shop online at jamierayvintage.com. Yeah, all these furniture pieces, we ship probably, I'd say, 80, 85% of what's in the shop, maybe even more. Um, they, they're all on the website, too. Like, if our, if our furniture is available, it's on the website. Well, you're right. These big pieces, you just got to kind of go. Yeah, you just go. I'd do it, but you're doing a good job of that. By the time you're done with what you're doing, we can sand the bottom. Let me go grab some sandpaper. I think we could, mine's pretty much dry, except for this spot I just painted right here. Mine has a few wet spots still. But it's really taking this, I don't want to say drab, but it was like an orangey pressed oak rocking chair that, you know, in the 80s, you they were a dime a dozen. They were everywhere, right? Um and now they're getting fewer and fewer because the wooden chairs, they just don't last forever. And, and we, I feel like we took it to a, a different place with the finish. It's, it's a whole different style now, even though it's the same chair. Well, if you look at like Swedish finishes, which we've really been studying a lot with our paint, a lot of them have this two-tone look. So when you do this, it really just takes it into like a Scandinavian cottage look, which I absolutely love. And it's, it's not, I mean, we're under an hour here to paint the entire thing and most of the details. So it doesn't take too long. To give you guys an idea, I probably would pay no more than $20 for this, even though we did get it. I don't wanna say free because we paid a lot of money for that church, <laughs> but I would pay $20 for this. And this is gonna sell um, without shipping. If somebody wanted it shipped, I could, but they're probably looking at a couple hundred dollars to ship it at least. Um, I would sell this in my store for around $169 is about the price point for a rocking chair. Um, a sturdy, good one. And if you want to know what like sturdy oak furniture, just look up new sturdy oak furniture. Like it's still a really great deal and it's way different than anything you're going to get at your local furniture store. <laughs> How's it going there, Zeb? Um, It's going good. All right. I've got some sandpaper here. I'm going to get the heat gun just to heat gun where I painted. I was just going to say, like Jimmy was talking about Scandinavian finishes, just think more o'clock but on a rocking chair because this is exactly what they do they take the details the carved details and they just highlight them with paint this is like if somebody in sweden was painting and they let their kid help paint that's this bottom part <laughs> <laughs> you did great i did good great. and i will come back with a little brush and touch it up with the other color and because i only got out of line in a few spots oh did you go with the uh oh that's a heat gun that one's louder it's almost like a blow dryer but i feel like it dries faster all right let me make sure that's dry yeah okay so this does need to be sealed if you guys are new here um, because it's a very matte finish. We'll come back with wax later. Here, I'll bring them in so they can see what you're doing. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I'm gonna take a damp rag and wet distress that a little bit. Let me grab a damp rag. If you get your milk paint wet, you could make a chip more than you want. I'm okay with that. I'm at one with a chippy. But... All right, and this is done. Okay, can you guys see that? I think we need to get a different angle. Can I pull this over just like, sorry guys. Karen asked, what is the best heat gun? We've used the, uh, oh, I can't even remember the name of the it. The DeWalt? No, it's not a DeWalt, it is yellow like DeWalt. 
It's like a Weber or something like that. Wagner. Wagner. That's this what Wagner is. heat gun has held up really well for a long time. It's about at the end of its road. As much as we use it, it's lasted the longest we've ever had. Um, and then we just got a couple new ones that do pretty well. Just know that if you're dropping them a lot, no heat gun's really going to last. The elements <laughs> break when they're hot. True that. True that. All right. I think that looks good. Um, I'm going to clear wax that and then maybe do a little bit of dark wax in oh, there. We left them looking at the... Hey, they're looking at goodness. All right. So so now that she's um, now that she's done the wet distress, you can really see a lot more of that two-tone detail coming through. And then the clear wax is going to make everything pop. All right. So I'm just going to clear wax just this spot and then kind of wipe it back a little bit. And then I'll come back with some black wax. Where is so Ziblex? make sure you guys, if you're not, if, if whatever social media you use or don't use, we will put a finished picture of this up in uh, our community on YouTube, also on Facebook and, and Instagram, and probably in the Jamie Ray Vintage group as well, because in an hour, it's hard to finish on a live stream. So we always try to make sure that we show you what the actual chair looks like all done up and ready to go once it's all waxed and, and finished up. So I just like to add a little bit of black wax in a few strategic places. Always, always, always clear wax, please. Um, because if you don't, it's going to look dirty. Yeah, clear wax first. And you're not going to be able to fix that. Well, you can fix it. You can use clear wax like an eraser, but sometimes it's hard. I was trying to go left-handed and then you move this chair like crazy. Sorry. And then it got real hard. Then it got real difficult. I'm I'm just testing your, your abilities here. I need to get right up, down into these details. So I'm just using a stencil brush. This is a JRV stencil brush. Ours actually are a different handle. This is a prototype. But um, the JRV stencil brushes work amazing for detailed waxing. You don't waste your wax. And you can really control where you put it as opposed to having to like put it all over. Okay, there we go. I like that. And so I'll probably just clear wax the whole thing and then just detail like all these little spindles. They'll get black wax in them because I want them to pop. Do you guys see why I didn't spend 8 million years like making that perfect? Because now that it's sanded and distressed and waxed, it looks great. Okay, I'm going to see if there's any questions. Yeah, it's, a, it's 11. So okay. I know we were a little late, but... Yeah, I think it, we're pretty much done showing them what we wanted to on this one. And that was the chair in case it sounded like I tooted, just so everybody knows. <laughs> um, all right, guys, if you want to recreate this finish, we used a mixture of Bluebird by Sweet Pickens, Sea Green, which is Ocean by um, Farmhouse Finishes or Sweet Pickens. And then we used Bond in our paint so that way it wouldn't chip too much. I also added a dash of Love Bug just to get this color. And then we used DIY's white swan, clear wax, and black wax. Also our Klingon brushes, all of which can be purchased at jamierayvintage.com. I just wanted to go over that list with you. So if you have to, you can watch the replay and write those things down. Because I know sometimes you guys like to try to do the same thing. Um, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Hit share if you're on Facebook. And subscribe or follow Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY. Love you guys. Oh, I can't believe how much milk paint we have left over. Yeah, this is this is like a what, like a twenty ounce cup. Yeah. We probably used eight ounces out of it to paint this whole chair. So just that, just an idea of how much product you need. Like we used a lot of different colors, right? But it doesn't actually take a. There's a lot of projects in this cup. <laughs> yeah, and it only lasts a couple hours. So I might be taking a few projects with me over to the church so <laughs> I can paint while Zep's working. All, All right, right, guys. Thanks Bye, guys. for joining Thanks us for today. Joining us. We appreciate it. Have a great Wednesday.